You know, a lot of people tend to think I'm a furry, and I understand why, but I'm not. But if you were to give me the option between being a furry and this... <laughs> Sign me up for that fursuit. Ayo, what is up everyone? It is the Alpha J of the Alpha J Show and 50,000 subscribers. I'm growing a lot faster than I was six months ago. And I wanna thank every single one of you for sticking by me in my slow period that was the last half of last year. So Kung Fu, I mean, the little panda fighter, often described as a mock buster, the movie stretches itself to 50 or so minutes and I just wanna get through this so I don't have to suffer as much as I already know I am. Alright, stop there. I know it's like a second into the movie, but I already see more than enough to comment on. The set design is laughable. I see whoever made this try to insert a few trees, a lake, some rocks, a bridge, but it still feels so empty. This doesn't tell you anything about the movie. A great backdrop would scream personality and wouldn't need you to speak for you to understand the atmosphere or the emotion or vibe of the scene. Take this for example. I searched up Kung Fu Panda backgrounds. This can tell you a lot about the scene. It has a lot of greens and seems very natural. It gives off a very calm and serene feel. The cracks and molds may tell its age, appearing very old. The houses on the sides and the gate gives an idea that either someone lives here or people used to. It has a very oriental feel with the way that the houses are, as well as the plants and greens that you may see. The high mountains could give a feel of solitude, as this place may be in a hard to reach space or secluded spot. Now let's go back to this. Do you get any tells besides the fact that the person who made this probably got a cheap deal on a 3D objects pack? Also, based off of the angle and perspective, I would say that we aren't as far away from the restaurant as the curves at the end of this horizon would imply. Why does it look like from this view, you would walk off the earth if you walk far? Also, because there's so much sky, and with those extreme horizon curves, it looks like the world is very small. That could be waved off as an alternate world, but I'm sure they didn't imply that, because there isn't a lot of things that are implied in this movie. Also, what is that name? Bear Bar Box? I mean, I get it. It's ran by bears, it's a bar, it features boxing, but that name seems incredibly uninspired. But I know it's only been a second, I can tell this is gonna be quite the long video. Okay, okay, stop, stop, again. Okay, let me, let me see, uh, huh, yeah. Yeah, that's the karate font from thefont.com. It was on the site before 2005 and the movie came out 2008. I'm sure they got the font from here, but let's just move on. So we get Thumbhead here, who looks less like a panda and more like my thumbs with flattened Pringles with the Photoshop stroke effect on too much, and his boss with a torso that screams inspiration from a defected SmackDown vs. Raw, or alternatively, Pancada and Polaris. Polaris is the boss of Bear Bar Box, and he wants Panda to finish sweeping the floor before the big fight as they have a boxing ring. That's their thing. So besides the animation that fits at home in your local recycling bin, Pancada wants to dance and really isn't into the whole boxing thing. Hmm? Hmm? You better watch yourself, Pancada. If the boss catches you goofing off again, you'll be daydreaming on the unemployment line. Boy. Pandas. At least I don't look like a malfunctioned gingerbread cookie come to life and dipped in the same batter of feces that made a defective domo from the problem solvers. You look like you took the complimentary napkins from the table to make your hair. And that's not a nose, that's mumps. And you should go get that checked out. Pandas. How dare you? With that Crayola makeup game. So they fast forward to the big fight where these two are battling, apparently being called Sweet Bear and Freak Teddy. It's fighting over again. It's a battle of the bears and I gotta tell ya, Sweet Bear is looking pretty sweet. There. You may have also noticed the lip syncing or lack thereof. As you can tell from the first scene, they kind of threw out the professional or industry standard title a long while ago. This could be the night that anything happens. What kind of faces are those? Did the movie stutter? Talk about your up, ladies and gentlemen. Can this mean victory for sweet and defeat for Teddy? Oh my god, what? I think that was funny because of how legitimately awful that was. I'll hand it to the movie, because it doesn't understand pacing, some scenes are incredibly too slow, and some are too fast. And they actually got it right here. You want your fight scene to be, in this case, fast. I mean, the punch was, everything around it wasn't. It was actually pretty bad. I don't believe it, he's killing me, this guy. He wins every time. That's why no one comes to the fights no more. It's a joke. 
maybe let him go? I mean, he's clearly surpassed everyone here. Maybe it's time for him to enter a league of fighters that will actually give him a challenge. The fact that this is the entire core of motivation for the rest of the movie to exist is truly weak. It's not like he's stronger than the boss, so it's not like he's going to intimidate him because of later on in the movie. And it's not like he's entertaining because the crowd is clearly bored. I'm sorry, dude, you gotta go. And before you say contracts, the movie never mentions that he has a contract, so I'm not going to either. However, speaking of contracts... What I wouldn't do to get back in the ring. I'd show that thunder chump a thing or two. Don't even think it. You get back in the ring and you lose the club. Don't forget, it's in the contract you signed. Yeah, I know. I'd lose the club as if you'd let me forget. Says who? This seems like a point that's just tacked on to give forced motivation to the character. Why would a great fighter such as him have to not be allowed back in the ring to own a club? That seems much more interesting than the actual fight. So Beth, often called Honey by her peers, swoons over Freak Teddy to Grizzlepuss, this snot-nosed low-poly hedgehog who often acts like he has a badly rendered pole up his butt. He gives off the impression that he's the guy who just wasn't smart enough or tough enough or attractive enough to get any success or any attention from the opposite sex. And he often devolves into this passive aggressive pseudo humbleness as a thinly veiled shield to hide his bitter narcissism and self-hatred of what his life has become. But who am I kidding? I'm sure it only took like 15 minutes to come up with his design and character, going to the eighth page of Google trying to be unique. Pancada and Grizzlepuss talk about how Freak Teddy attracts all the girls, despite earlier in the movie, him being shown by the movie to be extremely boring boring to the audience. How about this? The kid here doesn't like to fight. He thinks it's too violent. <laughs> Well, yes, fights are violent. Maybe if you weren't so bitter, you would understand that. Also, look at this shot. It doesn't show Pancada in full and has this unnecessarily cut of his subject. Even though Beth walked away earlier or skated, she just comes back for this scene? Why not just have Pancada come when Beth and Grizzlepuss were talking? It makes it seem like you were coming up with scenes as you went along. So Beth essentially emasculates Pancada. And if you didn't know, Beth is supposed to be the love interest because female. Yeah, who is it? Uh... Pardon me, Mr. Polaris. Yeah, Pancada, come on in. Wait. No. Are you gonna show the entire- Oh my god, stop, 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 stop. Alright, some people are going to think that I'm nitpicking, but this scene describes the entire core of the problem of the cinematography of this movie. What did that scene show? Why was it important for us to see Pancada walk the entire length from the door to his boss's desk? Every shot counts, and even in quote-unquote kids' movies, the shot still means something. Admit it, this was just an empty shot to pad out the movie so that they can have the title of feature length. They have quite the amount of unnecessary shots. And on the long list of flaws about the movie, this ranks quite high. You want to know why critics or people in general criticize the pacing of episodes or movies? It's because with the art of storytelling, the amount of time you give something is incredibly important. By giving something a lot of time to sink in, you are usually implying that the subject or intention of the shot has a lot of importance. Sometimes you can be letting things settle down or sink in in order to subvert expectations. Maybe you're beginning or ending a scene that was of great importance, but this scene here is is nothing like that. It doesn't tell me anything more than Pankata, which hurts the type by the way, let alone speak with my sick voice, is walking towards his boss's office and a simple cut would have shown the exact same information. Pankata goes to this place right here, most likely ran by this person, Master Zin, and after being transported through the black hole of no backgrounds, we get to this scene here. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. hmm? That was not editing on my part. The scene just ends like that. Such a jarring editing choice. It's not like you had so much to tell and you had to make the sacrifice of cutting that scene. It's not like we saw a scene earlier that went on 10 years too long. Too much confusion can make you seem mentally unstable. Mentally unstable. The way your head is shaking, you are in no way to judge. Meditation? More like injection. Clearly you're on something. I know people rag on Family Guy for its awkward and rigid movements, but on the other end of the spectrum is just as bad. There's this girl? We work together down at the club, see? And I think she's really neat and everything. You better watch yourself, Pancata. If the boss catches you goofing off again, you'll be daydreaming on the unemployment line. Boy, pandas. But you must also show her that loyalty has value. Ah, oh, yes. You're talking about the value of money, right? Mm, that's kind of complicated. I don't earn a whole lot. No, what's wrong with you? Are you really that stupid? <laughs> I just realized. 
I just realized that the lower half of his body is folded in such a very painful way. That and the fact that everyone's nails look incredibly and creepily sharp. So Polaris, the bar's owner, gets the idea of fighting Freak Teddy in a costume, in a disguise. Because by the contract of what he signed to own this bar, he cannot do it himself. And it has taken him two years to figure this out, disguising himself. I mean, who would notice? It's not like anyone's gonna find out. <laughs> Something smells like an order of chicken and broccoli with a side order of feet. Now that you mention it... Oh, it's me! I haven't worn this outfit since I had to get rid of my motorcycle! I can understand being in a room, and because you've been in an area so long you don't notice a certain smell. I can understand not having a nose, and so you wouldn't be able to smell. But what I don't understand, and I refuse to believe, is that this discount Coca-Cola bear got these clothes that he wore years ago, and put them on the same way humans do, because he's anthropomorphic, which he wore years ago go and was in a room with the odor of something he wore years ago and not once did he smell it because Pancada had to point it out. But there's a reason why he has to point it out. This is because he is the one that has to wash it. Boss's orders. He goes past Beth who he calls Honey. Really glad I had Wikipedia open or I wouldn't even really know half of the names of the people in this movie. And the names I would have given to these characters while more accurate towards their personality would not have matched the creative genius behind this project. I mean Grizzlepuss. That's such a great name right? So Panda goes to wash these clothes using the YouTube asset library for sound effects, but not using the noise cancellation, creating a very weird distinction between the silence of the movie and the background noise of the royalty-free sound effects that they stole. Also, look at that wall. It just screams Google Images. You know, simple things such as fading the song with the sound of the washing machine really goes the extra mile. Everything about this is weird, including the animation, but I will get to the animation soon. So Beth, who gets called Honey again, questions Pancada, who diverts attention away from the washing machine that Beth questions for odd reason. I know you don't wear clothes, but this is a washing machine. It washes clothes. Then we get to, um, uh, wait a minute. Can we, uh, go back to the first shot of the movie? Nice to know what box is in Bear Box Bar. It clearly stands for you had a box of miracle Grow that you spread around to get this plethora of trees around. Bad movie. Bad. Corner. Grizzlepuss decides to voice his salt around the upcoming guy, and Pancada, because he's supposed to keep it a secret, hypes up the guy so much, you know, because he isn't interested in boxing. He tries to hype up this new guy, who is supposed to give Freak Teddy a run for his money, which, like I said before, is Polaris, the owner of Bear Bar Box, or Bear Box Bar. I don't think it matters at this point. You're doing it again! There is no defense for this crappy pacing. You can tell that they're trying to pad out the time for this mockbuster with these shots. So as you remember before, Pancada is supposed to be washing the clothes for Polaris so that they don't smell. However, he forgot, which led to this laughably deplorable scene of Pancada falling down the stairs. And could I just say, I know I haven't been talking about the animation, but that's a given. The animation is terrible. The motion seems very unnaturally rigid. And the poses sometimes are locked in place Family Guy style, as if they're on a snap. The physics are as fluid as a cinder block. It's one of the core reasons this movie was panned by critics. So Pancada sees that the clothes have shrunk. The black clothes, mind you. However, because Polaris doesn't recognize the smell, he won't recognize the tightness of this shrunken clothes, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So we get the big fight, and as we can see, the audience doesn't even care, as if they know it's going to be an easy win for Freak Teddy. I wonder where all these women who are supposed to be all over Freak Teddy. Maybe they're invisible. That's another thing this is supposed to imply. Heck, maybe Beth is one of the very, very few women on this planet. I mean, the horizon is curved, so the planet might really be small. Plus, it explains the way everyone calls her honey when her name is Beth. They want to pass on the gene before they die. How's that for a dark theory? The only thing mysterious about this not-so-great bear is how long it'll take before he starts screaming for his mama. The only thing mysterious here is how long it's going to take for you to blow your nose. You wouldn't have to deal with this if you let it out of your body. It has to come out. Get some Kleenex and stop being bitter about everyone around you. Seriously, I don't get the gimmick here. 
is it supposed to be funny that he has a snot nose? Well, it's not. Coming from someone who had a snot nose for the past four days. It's very unappealing. And it's gross. And I know this isn't for me, but if you really wanted to make this work, you wouldn't have it there all the time. With everyone pretending that it doesn't exist. You would make it seem like it comes at the most inopportune times. The no selling of the snot nose gimmick ruins it. It makes it seem normal when in reality it's not. So the clothes shrink and it makes it look like Polaris is Pancada, as Beth and Grizzlepuss are quick to question. Then we get this scene. No clip, bone breaking, sticky limb central. Oh my god, that, that has to be one of the worst dancing scenes I've ever reviewed on this channel. I, I bet it, it only gets better from here. So we get the scene, which, just, just watch it. Look, Mr. Grizzlepuss, it is Pancata. No wonder he was saying all those silly things this morning. You're right, that dopey kid must have a death wish. He couldn't possibly think he can beat Freak Teddy. The scene she is referring to earlier is the laundry scene where Pancata was caught down there. And if you remember from earlier, Pancata used martial arts to explain the ruckus that he was causing to hide his dancing daydreams. However, as you remember, Grizzlepuss wasn't down there. So the implication doesn't make sense. He wasn't down there at all. He wasn't down there at all. You idiots. While I will admit the fight had creative saplings for interesting moments, the, the moment ultimately crumbles due to a lack of quick and fluid motions, no indication of the impact of the punches being strong, and not utilizing the environment or camera work to create an importance for the battle. You want to know why school fights have a weird and unorthodox demand on YouTube? It's because when someone really gets rocked and they take a heavy punch or a slam, you know it hurt, and you know that person felt it. You want to know why wrestling and UFC are still gathering millions of fans? It's because they use cameras or the environment to create a sense of legitimacy. You know why Dragon Ball is admired for its fight scenes? It's because of their buildup and indication of the impacts being strong. These are basic principles of fight scenes. It's supposed to hurt. It's supposed to have a sense of urgency. That is why fight scenes work. Ain't that panda something? I can't believe I never knew how dreamy he was. Dreamy because he's violent? So you want to date him because he's violent. He can now punch people and that is what attracts you to him. Okay, so Polaris, being the masked fighter that he is, knocks out Freak Teddy, but to Beth and Grizzle Snot as Pancada. Meanwhile, Pancada is giving an outstandingly horribly animated dance scene, to which this guy here, who is on the right side of the door, as the door is to our left, right? Our left. Quickly cuts to the left side of the door, as the door is to now to our right. Also this. Your execution was flawless. Your technique is totally mind-blowing. I just think you overreached a little at the end. All right, before you say, Jay, the reason he is seen on both sides of the door is because he's voice acting for both of the male judges. Wrong again, because Master Zin, or Master Fold Him Up at the Torso, whatever his name is, is sitting closer to the door than the judge. So either A, he is voice acting both, and the guy on the right of the door switched spots, or B, he isn't, and the original guy was seen on both sides. Either way, it's an animation error and a very confusing one. How does something like this happen? So we get people celebrating as if Pancada actually won the fight, with Snot Puss's snot clipping through his nose. Also because Beth, or Honey, as she was called again, and I'm leaning towards believing that her name is Honey, unlike Wikipedia. Beth isn't said once in this movie, and maybe it's a nickname between her boss and her co-workers, but I don't know what to believe anymore. She skates past him, here, but she somehow catches up within the time of walking this bridge. Jeez, wouldn't that be a breeze? On roller skates. Also, even though Pancada goes through the door first, Beth, sorry, Honey, is already seen inside. Also, what pose is that? So, did you hear about last night? Oh, sure. Everyone's been really nice about it. Are you nuts? You loco in the head? You're acting like you're the guy who beat Teddy. But it was me. Pancada, are you losing your marbles? What are you giving me? Who is this Jin guy? Master Jin. See, boss, he's like my modern dance instructor. Dance instructor? Yeah, and my audition piece was awesome. I mean, isn't that what everyone's talking about? <laughs> you mean... <laughs> You thought I... <laughs> I was really talking about... <laughs> I thought I was going crazy. <laughs> Sorry, kid. <laughs> Ain't that a kick in the head? <laughs> you see, kid, I guess I really didn't know what you were talking about. <laughs> 
Ha 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 ha. Your vocal editing is quite terrible. Ha ha ha. Because when you edit, ha ha. The laughter in between, ha 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 ha. You, ha ha. Keep tiny spaces in between that make it quite jarring. Ha 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 ha. And the entire thing sounds forced. So now Pancada gets Polaris with shrunken clothes who is taller than Pancada, but I'm not gonna harp on that because I can believe that part of the story. I will defend it there. Nitpicking on the height would not change the story, so I'm not going to harp on that. He gets that Polaris won the battle looking like him. Pancada being the voice of reason wants to tell everyone the truth. However, Polaris doesn't want to lose the club. That, I will admit, is pretty okay. It's a pretty okay conflict because both sides have good intentions. The concept of good versus right, lawful and chaotic, good and evil, blah blah blah. And we get this scene here. Are you guys talking about something stupid or what? No, I mean, uh, as a matter of fact, we were just making plans for the next big fight, right champ? Oh yeah, that's right, absolutely there, coach, you bet. This has to be one of the most unsatisfied and grumpy characters I've ever reviewed on this channel. Why does he have a job here? He's so pessimistic and weird. And never seems to have fun unless he's around honey. So they decide to keep doing what they're doing and not tell anyone. Pencotta gets all the glory and Polaris gets the beat up freak Teddy. So besides the feet clipping into the floor, irrational and unnatural use of the pipe, and the texture of the wood changing immediately, Pencata spills the beans and he's simply a fraud to the people unbeknownst to their knowledge. They think he's a champion because of his skills within the ring, and he is actually a champion because of his skills outside of the ring. Master Zin suggests that Pencata become the champion that they perceive him to be because of honor. However, he's against violence. Why? The movie never really states, but I'm pretty sure it's because he feels he's weak and he believes he would never win a fight anyway. We get a similar, if not the same scene from earlier involving a newspaper, and I plan to put both of the scenes side by side for you to make the call. And Pencada does the entire walking scene again. It's literally the, okay, no, they cut. Pencada then wants to do the battle after meditation, I guess, to which Polaris tries to stop him. I mean, the masked fighter can beat Freak Teddy again and then retire, thus Pencada never having to go into the ring, but uh, what do I know, you know? Pencada threatens to blow the whistle about the entire situation, which forces Polaris's hand unnecessarily. But here we are. I'm gonna skip the obvious Rocky scene as it's very hokey and crappy as you would imagine it to be. Instead, I'm going to talk about the following. I usually am pretty conservative with the clips I use in my video, conservative in the Google definition of purposely low for the sake of caution. This is mainly to avoid copyright and it's also to convince you to see the parts that I don't show you, which are more often than not the jokes or the entire big moment of whatever episode I'm talking about. However, I am not pulling your leg when I say that you have seen majority of the backgrounds used in this movie. Between the bar, which is really just the office, the laundry room, and the main room, the front of the bar, some random forest paths, the dojo from a few angles, including outside, and probably the spare unique space that is the stair set. The backdrops get extremely stale, extremely fast. Just like the music in the movie, it fails to realize that with little variation, it drains any motivation of any other aspect of the movie to be at least something. So we get to the third fight. The first fight introducing Freak Teddy as an unstoppable force. The second fight made Polaris mistaken as Panda, the new force in town. The third fight settles it all. Will Pancada beat Freak Teddy and claim all of the glory? Of course he couldn't do it. He gets beaten up all along the way and he gets knocked out. Do you expect me to feel empathy for a guy who refuses to improve? Sure, at the end he decided to start trading for the battle, but he only started to do it because Master Zen instructed him to. He would have been perfectly fine taking the glory after after the Polaris and Mankata talk here. I feel no sympathy towards him, as he knew for a fact that this fight was going to go south. He wanted the girl, but he did not want to improve himself for the girl. He wanted to stay soft. He did not want to get into her interest. He wanted to remain shy. That's his fault. Now, am I saying that because he's shy, he doesn't deserve to have her? Absolutely not. As an introvert, I get his anxiety. However, here, if you participated in a lie and your traits were not very likable to begin with, and there's no reason to care about your dancing, then explain to me why I should care about this character. I mean, let's be honest. The only reason this movie had the amount of recognition it has is because of its infamy within the industry. May I talk to you, sir? What's on your mind, Pancata? <laughs> they did it again. Ugh. 
I think I might give in at this point. I'm getting there, but listen to this. Remember when you were in training and I kept saying, I knew you could beat that overgrown furball? Sure, I remember. And then I went and fumbled everything all up. Well, I was lying. Hmm? I knew there was no way a tubby little panda could beat a monster like that. I only said those things to motivate you, that's all. But then this tubby little panda went and let everybody down. <laughs> I can't live with this constant torture any longer. Everybody out there thought you were going to flatten Teddy Thunders for sure. I know. I was a big tubby disappointment. Of course, knowing Teddy Thunders, I knew that would be impossible. So that's why I placed all my bets on Teddy. So that means you're rich. <laughs> in fact, I'm about the richest man in the whole city. Oh, Mr. Polaris, you must have won a truckload of money. Even I placed a bet on myself. Listen, kid, there's going to be lots of changes around here. Yes, you heard that right. Because everyone knows Pancada is one of the biggest wusses in the world and could never fight Freak Teddy. While breaking a legally binding contract, he decides to multiply his money by bamboo god knows how much and run off into the unknown with his earnings. Pancada then inherits the place, much to Grizzle Puss's dis May. Where's Polaris? I'm afraid you missed him. He didn't want any long goodbyes. He was afraid he might get too emotional. What's that? What do you mean long goodbyes? Where is he? You didn't play fair and square. He knew you weren't gonna win because he knew you weren't him. You crooks, you dirty swindler. Hey, hold on now. Let's not be small about it, Grizzlepuss. I didn't play to lose. I played to win. I lost fair and square. But that first fight, you weren't Pancada. You, you were Polaris. You are correct. But everyone thought it was me. So... I thought it only proper to fight Teddy Thunders in the rematch myself. See? But, but where is Polaris? He can't do this to me. We have a legally binding contract, him and I. You look like that one hairball from back at the barnyard, except like a million as exciting as him. You have been one of the most bitter and pessimistic letdowns for a children's animated feature length film. Although yes, you are in the right. That doesn't change my standing that you are one of the most bitter and annoying characters that I've ever reviewed on this channel and probably ever will review. Now admittedly, not as bad as Chloe, but definitely better than the likes of Peggy Hill or Beast Boy TTG era, for instance. At least the latter had good moments. I've never enjoyed a scene where he played a major role. So Pancada, the wuss who got beaten up in front of a ton of people and had that beatdown publicized, uses his passion of dancing to transform the boxing bar into a dancing bar where he dances for guests and everyone lives in mediocrity. And that was the little panda fighter. It's over. It's finally over. This is truly one of the worst children's media to ever have come across my gaze. I would never recommend this to anyone at any age in the world. This should be preserved because at least I can say from an education standpoint this in virtually every aspect is not how to do anything related to children's animation yes at some points I did get heated mostly for entertainment value but honestly this movie was designed to scam and leech off the hard work of good folks who slaved thousands of man hours to create Kung Fu Panda it's dishonest dishonorable and disrespectful to anyone who enjoys animation I hope those who want to get into animation watch this to learn what not to do so like with every movie review I do let's get into my favorite least favorite best and worst characters of this movie. Now, mind you, when I say best or favorite, that doesn't mean that they're good characters. It just means out of the crap pile, they were the least crappy. So my favorite character was Polaris, only because he came out on top during this entire crap fest. He never really annoyed me, and he gave Pancada more chances than he deserved. Honestly, betting on his pity party was extremely smart, and I honestly would do the same with such a train wreck. My least favorite would have to go to Beth and Grizzlepuss. I know I gave Grizzlepuss a lot of disdain, however, Beth or Honey, is very shallow and is written either to be attracted to the other guy, attracted to the main character, or to be the girl, which I'm sorry, that doesn't make a good female character. The best character would have to go to Master Zin. Besides the announcer guy, he is one of the decent characters in this movie. He sees things in a very optimistic way, and his moral of being the person that you want people to see you as is not necessarily the worst thing in the world. He was very helpful and he was very patient with Pancada, and he helped to give him this whole dancing gig in the first place. However, the worst would have to go to Pancada. Pancada. Originally, I was going to give this to Grizzlepuss and I was going to switch the two, but no. Every time I think about what his character represents and how he essentially learned to do nothing but roll over and cry and whine and have everyone around him do the dirty work while he does all of this BS really irks me. Especially because children are very impressionable and they can take their morals or actions from what they see. What kind of lesson is it to teach someone to essentially be the stepping stone of society? I know we all can't be champions, but you don't also have to be the welcome
welcome that. A lot of people in our community really don't like the whole taking morals seriously argument, and this time I don't care. If just one child takes Pancada's legacy to heart and decides to become another soft pushover that needs to be babied and sheltered in our society, then honestly that's too much from a movie that hides its almost certainly low budget. Introverts have it hard enough as it is, and Pancada, being the entitled little brat he was throughout the movie, especially at the end, whining and making the situation all about himself, and passing out victim cards like free candy, really made me want to step back and say, don't be like Pancada. Own the fact that you're shy. Own the fact that you're an introvert. And work on your social skills. Ask that girl out. Ask that guy out. They might say yes, they might say no. But at least you don't have to wonder what if. And you may move on to the next person. Figure out that passion. Put every day into that passion. And grind and work your way up. And add something to this world. Realize that the reason why no one cares about Pancada is because Pancada doesn't care about himself. To make people around him enjoy him. Everyone in the world who is cared about from the bundle of joy you may have in the future for being your very own contribution to this world to the family member who never forgot to acknowledge you when they visit they give and pancada never gave back it's okay to be afraid but it's not okay to whine and cry until someone cleans up your mess put in the work even if you have to be up until 4 54 a.m with symptoms of your sickness writing this very sentence you don't know who's gonna care you'll never know until you do it and double down on it and show people that you actually care about something and you actually want to make this solely breaking piece of a rock a better place. Maybe you'll get to 50,000 people to believe in you and what more of what you're passionate about. Maybe you'll get to speak to that one person who inspired you. Maybe you'll do something that really means a lot to the person who did something that meant a lot to you. Maybe you'll meet some of the best people to support you and your channel in this current day and age. And that's why I think Pancot is bad. He doesn't represent any of that. He has no backbone. He has no drive. He has his own selfish desires. And the only thing driving him to do what was right was fear. And I'm sorry, but if I ever saw Pancata in real life, I wouldn't hesitate to punch him square in the face. Why would a great fighter such a Why would a They have quite the amount of unnecessarily You wanna know why people criticize pacing within episodes or movie? In order to sink or sink in in order to And a simple cut would have shown the exact same The fact that that and the fact that every The fact that that <coughs> So Polaris, the bar's owner I mean, who's gonna notice? It's not like anyone's gonna find out. It clearly stands to keep it a secret. Talks of, gives so much, hypes up the guy, so much. The physics are as fluid as a cinder block. With everyone pretending that it doesn't exist, as Beth and Grizzle puts. You wanna know why Dragon Ball is admired for its fight scenes? And doing things, and never the JoJo from a few angles, and as an introvert, I get his anxiety. However, here, you have much the group, much the grizzle pusses, much the group, but definitely better than the likes of Peggy or Bobby. Honestly, betting on his pity party, however, best, however, Beth or Honey is very shallow. Well, this was the 50k special. Don't worry, I'm much more relaxed now. Anyway, I do want to thank you guys, my community, and believing in me to help me get so far. We could do so much more, and with your help, we will. I have a lot more in the tank, and with tons of drive, I promise that 2018 is going to be my year. I do want to say that I do think watching this movie to see what is wrong with it is a pretty educational experience, because so many of us could notice a great animated movie in terms of composition and writing, but starting from scratch, some subtle things may be lost in translation. However, because this movie is so good at doing nearly everything wrong, besides competent exposition shots and mostly keeping the subject on camera, you can see the difference clearly and it's just great to study. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below, follow me at the Alpha J Show, and go into my request video for anything that you would like me to cover that's not in the pinned comment of that specific video. If you really like this video, you should check out all of my reviews for more quality content on this channel. Make sure to subscribe and feel free to consider my Patreon. As always, I hope your time is well spent, and Alpha, out.